hello and welcome back and today we want to do another before you buy on the new Synology HAT 5300 series of hard drives. A number of you when these drives were first announced looked at them with a little bit of apprehension, maybe looked at them and gone that is exactly what I'm looking for and that's what today's video is about. It's not about talking you into or out of buying these drives, it's just talking about five reasons you may want to consider them for your next NAS purchase and five reasons you might want to give them a miss. But before we go any further it's worth highlighting once again just like in a few videos recently behind me I've got all kinds of building work happening next door and try as I might to remove a lot of that some of it is going to seep through so I apologize in advance if some of that makes its way onto the recording but without further ado let's talk about those five reasons that you may want to consider the Synology HAT 5300 as the next NAS drive going into your server. Reason number one is the fact that you are getting in terms of hardware spec, an enterprise class drive, and we are talking borderline, you know, um, uh, uh, data center class here, DC uh, class drives, at a price point that I would compare to large scale normal NAS. We are talking about comparing these drives against the likes of WD Red Pro and Seagate Iron Wolf Pro. The, these drives are just a like a higher quality build we are talking about drives that are 7200 rpm and 256 to 512 megabyte cache respectively on capacity but also with a great data rights per day with a, a five-year warranty inside and just a general build quality that if you break it down into the specifications of power utility you find that these drives are far more comparable to seagate exos and WD um, uh, Gold and Ultrastar class drives, which are noticeably more expensive. So you are getting a data center class drive at a high-end NAS price point. Again, it changes a little age capacity, but the prices are pretty similar indeed. Reason number two that you might want to consider the Synology HAT 5300 series of hard drives is their firmware control. These drives allow you, once installed inside a Synology system, to have their firmware updated from within DSM, that portal access point of the system the drives are in a Synology NAS. If you buy WD Red or Seagate Iron Wolf or any of those different myriad of different hard drives, to update their firmware, in most cases you have to power down the NAS, remove them, enter them in, uh, individually or in you know, bulk dock systems and update their firmware with client apps for Mac, Windows and Linux systems. Now, by removing them, you're handling the drives and it's a little bit, ooh, don't like that very much. The ability to update the firmware from within a NAS is actually quite advantageous. First and foremost, because you're going to lessen the downtime. Yes, you'll have to dismount the system or maybe they've got some sort of raid hot spell way around that. But still, nevertheless, you are going to have to um, uh, downplay the uh, uh, basically remove the storage system while updating those drive firmware but you're going to do it you're going to do it for considerably less time if you can do it within the Synology NAS system without having to power the device down remember if you've got lots of drives in a system and you've had added more drives over time or purchased them from mixed batches there's a good chance that the drives inside your system may have different firmware between them and it's always good to have uniform firmware but on your hard drives on your computers on your everything reason number three that you might want to consider the Synology series of hard drives is to do with that dedicated firmware. Now, it's no secret that these drives are Toshiba hard drives inside, and we're gonna talk about that in a little bit more detail later on, but these are Toshiba hard drives with a Synology firmware inside. And the idea of having hard drives with their firmware inside that is being geared and tailored towards the very systems they are going in can only be advantageous. Whether it is because then there can be warning signs and cross communication between the storage media and the UI, I'm sorry, the software and the GUI of the system there inside can only be beneficial. And then you've got matters like vibration, heat, power consumption, which when scaled with the system they're going in and tweaked in between, you no doubt will get performance benefits, be it read and write or just getting the job done that tiny bit further. Next, reason number four that's worth considering, and again, this goes back to them being data center class drives, it's stuff like that 550 terabytes written and the performance, even on the 8TB being around 230 megabytes per second, 
peaking apparently at 270 megabytes per second of um, consistent performance there, reported by Synology themselves. Now, let's tackle those two things together. The terabytes written at 550 is almost double that of the self-same price point WD Red Pro and Seagate Ironwolf Pro drives out there of, with them with a, rep a reported 300 terabytes written per year. So again, 550 terabytes per year versus 300 terabytes uh, written per year. You've got to say that is a huge disparity. And even in terms of the read and the write, the, the, the performance of those Synology drives is just that tiny mite higher thanks to that enterprise level uh, build quality. And when you're using these in huge storage array of 12, 16, 24 bays, those little differences will all multiply together in the right RAID environment. Reason number five you may want to consider the Synology range of HAT5300 drives goes back to that point again of them being those Toshiba drives. Now, the Toshiba MG8 series, and again the 6 and the 7 respectively as well, have generally done quite well in things like the Backblaze reports. For those that aren't aware, and we've touched on it in other videos, these drives have ranked quite well in terms of their AFR, average um, failure rates, and Backblaze has been testing many, many drives for many, many years, and has been covering a lot of NAS drives as well. And although the test numbers and the test time on a number of the newer generation, like the 16TB MG08 um, Toshiba drives, isn't quite as extensive and long due to their relative newness, it's still very, very low failure rate. And that is the physical drive we're talking about here that Synology have uh, put their firmware on and applied, the, obviously, their livery all the way through. What I'm saying is they've, they've selected quite a robust drive indeed for these, and you've got to give them a little bit of credit for that. So, that's really the reasons you should go for it, but I think it would be remiss not to highlight five reasons why a number of us might be ever so slightly apprehensive. Reason number one, they are only for Synology NAS systems. Now, let's break into that a little bit. These drives, of course, when we've got them here, you can sling them in a QNAP, sling them in anything, and they're going to work. The drive isn't just going to go, nah, -uh, not doing that. It's going to work. But once you put them in those systems, you are using an unsupported environment. And, you know, that does give Synology license to say, we can't support you with our warranty in that unsupported configuration. Now, we've already touched on that these drives are kind of enterprise class drives at a high end NAS price point. So a number of people who aren't running Synology setups might look at these as a way of getting a decent drive and save a bit of bunts. But there's still no avoiding that if you use them in non-supported Synology systems, you know, there's every possibility you're not going to be covered. Obviously, if you use them in a Synology per se, you're probably fine. But once you've used them in non-Synology devices, that warranty becomes shaky and potentially invalid. So do bear that in mind. Reason number two, you might not want to go for the Synology HAT5300 is, although we haven't got one here, they're going to be noisy. Let's be completely frank about this. Data center class drives aren't ones for pussyfooting around the idea of low noise. These are installed in huge systems. Rack mounts that have got redundant power suppliers, are, you know, huge intensive internal cooling systems because a rack mount has to cool simply horizontally. It doesn't have a lot of air uh, airflow around it because of the way rack mounts are stacked. And these are drives that need to reach top performance quickly with their spin up, spin down between active idle. The result is if we've seen, as we have seen from everything from Exos to Ultrastar, is that these drives make a racket. And although if you're installing them in a rack mount system, you ain't even going to hear it. I know a lot of people have seen these drives have thought about putting them in twos and four bay devices because of their inherent benefits. Do be aware that if you do that, you are going to hear some clicks and words. They're not broken. It's just they are more structurally designed for that performance threshold and that robustness. And with it comes noise. So do bear that in mind. And we're not talking like someone hitting the table with a hammer or these guys behind me that are driving me crazy. We're just talking about the clicks, hums and words where if you're in close proximity, it's going to drive you close to madness. Reason number three, that you might not want to consider these drives in your next NAS system. There's only three capacities right now. And it seems a you know a bit of a dick move to have a go at these guys for only having three capacities at launch. You know, they're not 
Seagate, they're not WD, they're not going to have um, an entire myriad of capacities available, but still, only three capacities seems a, just a little bit underwhelming, you know, 8, 12 and 16 TB, I think a number of people were looking at 4 TB, because that's generally considered the, you know, the entry point for a lot of decent storage systems in RAID 5 and more, and I know a number of people were kind of looking at the gaps in between your 10, your 14s, and they're just not available here. Also, it's worth highlighting that at launch, they did not introduce an 18 TB drive, the top max capacity currently available from Seagate and WD on their respective NAS and data center class ranges. So that lack of the largest capacity with companies that are going, right, we're just going to go all in for a solution that's going to cover us, might put some of them off. 16 to 18 TB isn't an enormous difference, but I do think it's a bit of a shame that these syst uh, that these drives are only really available in these few capacity forms. Reason number four that you might not consider these drives in your next NAS system, and this is more of a combination of everything we've talked about so far. They are just too enterprise for some users. Now, with these drives, again, we've talked about the noise, we've talked about the performance, and of course, the price point that comes with Pro Series drives. But if you are looking at drives for smaller NAS systems, I'm talking up to eight bays, these are seem seemingly well OTT. You know, these are way out there for your concerns. Now, there is, of course, and I've talked about this on a few other uh, platforms, there's a school of thought that says, this movement from Synology into the area of hard drives is, you know, not the complete, you know, not their complete plan. Chances are, you know, we could see a more standard class drive with a change in that model ID. We saw the naming convention on uh, published on websites like computerbase.de. Again, we linked to that in a previous article. But I think the fact that these are enterprise only is going to put a lot of users off, but at the same time, if Synology you go to the trouble of releasing a standard class drive comparative to that of WD Red Standard or Iron Wolf Standard, I think on the one hand there'll be some people that will be happy, and there'll be another bunch of people that go, oh, I don't like where this is going in terms of um, strict usage on my NAS. Um, reason number five, the last reason that you might not want to go for these drives they are SATA only. Now, once again, this does err uh, back to this might just be the first step in a multi-release strategy from Synology, but there's still no avoiding that given these drives are only available for Synology NAS utilization, and indeed, there are systems arriving uh, in the XS series that are only uh, supporting these drives and no other hard drives installed inside them on the compatibility lists. The fact that there's only SATA drives available and they highlight that, you know, that moving forward a lot of their um, UC, so that's uh, redundant or oh, uh, dual controller systems, uh, XS, SI, uh, and uh, a few of their top, top, top tier systems that are going to be released moving forward are only going to support their drive media and not WD or Seagate drives inside. There is that question about if these are only SATA drives, are they expecting people to install only SATA drives in some of their systems that are SAS equipped? Case in point, their flash station series, uh, we talked about this on the channel before, a lot of their flash station units support both SATA and SAS drives inside, but Synology only have SATA SSDs. So if you look in their compatibility lists, it seems a bit odd that you would install SATA drives in a SAS-equipped flash station system. You're going to want to go straight in with that 12 gig U2-esque sort of storage there. But of course, not U2, because that's when we're talking about NVMe. But nevertheless, there's still that slight apprehension about there being only SATA drives available in this range and no SAS drives, be it for hard drive or SSD utilization. Maybe that will change, and if it does, we'll of course make a follow-up video on those. But this has been five reasons why you should consider the new Synology HA5, uh, HAT5300 and five reasons that you might want to give them a miss. Thank you so much for watching. Visit the links in the description to all the things we talked about today. And of course, if you've enjoyed the video, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. And I will see you next time.